Hello and welcome to episode 98 of the Knitting Annihilator podcast. I am Akira, your friendly neighborhood knitter, and I am coming to you today from my amazing home in Adamsville, Alabama, where I live with my sexy, gorgeous husband and my two kids, Aiden, who is five, and Ethan, who is three. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I do hope that you stick around with us, go through this journey of our crafting life together, period. And if you are a returning viewer, how are you? Hey girl, hey. So, welcome to my living room. Don't know if you've been here in a while as far as the podcast is concerned because... Um, I have, you know, like the yarn wall and all that stuff, but my ring light is broken, so I um, figured the best lighting would be in the living room, and my son and husband are asleep in my room, which is across from the closet that I film in, so I was like, well, let's just take it to the front today. So welcome to my living room with beautiful lighting. Um, today is August 31st of 2023. It's 11 o'clock in the, I guess that's morning, midday, um, with my one son sleeping, one son spending the night with grandma. I was like, what better time than now to podcast? I'm going to try to hurry up and podcast so I can hurry up and get it up before July ends today. So, um, how are you? Um, the recap from, I think I've uploaded a podcast in July um nothing's been going on <laughs> it, was a, it was a kind of a rough month uh, but we made it through and now we are all steamboat ahead to um to kindergarten so yeah it's it's been wild so I've been doing some crafting that I want to share with you and yeah, I think that's all of it. So let's get started. You can find me on Instagram as knitting underscore annihilator underscore. All of these show notes and things of that nature will be listed down below in the description box where it says show more. And I usually put a lot of things on the screen for you. So I try to have some space for that for my editor <laughs> so she can do what she needs to do. Um... So yeah, I have one big humongous victory or finished object. Um, I call them victories and battles because um, as knitters, we are superheroes and knitting is our superpower. And what have you accomplished with that? But, um, you know, defeating the depths of whatever you defeat when you craft. <laughs> I'm wild today. I haven't had any coffee today. And I was an adult and I was like, oh, I'm going to eat a salad. But now I want like pancakes and coffee. So we'll see how far this goes. <laughs> so I have one victory or one finished object, two works in progress, two battles, um, a little bit of strategies, if you will, of things that I hope to get done in August and things like that. Um, you'll also see that in my goals video which will come out sometime this week because it is Monday. So I'll probably have that up on Friday. Yeah, let's shoot for that. Friday, Saturday-ish. So yeah, oh, I should be, no, that's for me. Okay, let's do this. So, oh my God, what did he get on it? I finished my husband's cardigan. We'll start there before I get aggravated. I finished my husband's cardigan. I have a lot to say about it and things that I'm going to do different for my own cardigan when I make it. This is the Jensen cardigan by these lovely people here. I cannot pronounce the names, so I will not butcher them and disrespect their culture. It is a paid for um, Aaron weight pattern but I use worsted weight which worked perfectly fine for me um he got something on it I don't know what that is I, I don't know what that is and that's so aggravating for which for me to show you I finished it 
last week. Um, sure. <laughs> Getting me sharp. Finished it last week, and then, um, as you can see, I haven't we woven in any of the ends. I want to get it blocked, um, but he has been wearing it. Um, his discomfort with it is that when he puts his hand in his pockets, it kind of like flaps out like that. And I was like, I feel like that will be fixed with some blocking, you know? Um, yeah, I feel like that'll be fixed with some blocking. And, uh, yeah. The yarn is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love the color combination that I came up with. So it's like a tan. Oh, you see a bit of a can. Tan, beige with like a cream and a dark um, charcoal gray. So my sweater that I'm going to make myself is going to be the charcoal gray, cream, and the beige as like the stripes. Um... And then, um, yeah, I did his, um, which was the second size. I think it was a 44-inch bust. The modifications that I made and I will make for myself. I'm Xing out the double knitting. I'm sorry. I'm not a double knitting girl. I have not loved that. Um, double knitting makes my hands hurt. And I kind of got through it in the smaller circumference, like here. I was able to kind of get through it, and I was like, okay. Um, but once I got to this collar, I ended up just doing ribbing. Because honestly, that's just what double knitting is. You're just slipping the pearls. You're just knitting the knit, slipping the pearls. So once I figured that out, I said, oh, honey, I'm just going to do ribbing. Because this is ridiculous. Um, also call for tubular bind offs. I just did a uh, Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off instead of that. Um, this is my first time knitting a pocket like this. So I'm hoping the blocking will kind of help with however the pocket, um, is supposed to lay. One can only hope. Um, this is my first time knitting. I think I've only made one other pocket in my life and it was like a kangaroo pocket like a little flap on the front so yeah this was my experience with the pocket and I think that's it that's the only things that I would change is the double knitting not doing that this is all acrylic yarn um, because my husband I won't say he's allergic to wool but I definitely had more of those rustic wools that I made him before and he does not wear that sweater at all so um, I decided to go acrylic this time and he has worn this since I've gotten it off the needles at least two or three times um, until I'm like okay bro please let me let me finish and block it and, you know weave in the ends and all that stuff um, he tells people those are his dangly decorations his his little uh Freely parts is what he's been telling people when he wears it outside. So I love it. Um, definitely going to make one for myself. I am not um, scared. Um, what I what I'm going to do for myself um, instead of the ribbing and the double knitting, I'm going to um, use a tactic that I seen in the um, Elm Street hoodie. And just do a folded situation figure out the numbers for it and then just knit that and then fold it in and then tack it down that way so because I I also don't like how the double knitting is kind of like um, what is the word grippy I guess like you can definitely tell that there, it's got like some hold to it so if you put it like in here it's kind of like you see what I'm saying? It's grippy. Grippy's the only word that can come to mind right now. It's got like a good grip on it. Whereas other things don't feel that way. Like it's kind of tight. And I don't know if it's kind of tight because I'm, 
I got tighter once the double knitting started. Um, but yeah, overall, I do love the finished product and I love the fit of the finished product on myself and my husband. So I am going to knit the 44 inch bust size for myself. That's what I was saying about the pattern. Technically, it is a paid for pattern. But it, the only way you can find the pattern is in the book, and it is the Moon and Turtle. Is it Moon and Turtle or Moons and Turtles? This would have already been on the screen already, so you don't even have to torture yourself with whatever I'm doing. <laughs> um, but I want to say it's Moon and Turtle a book. Um, it is a issue, a part, in association with Pom Pom Magazine. And I think I'm going to knit every everything in that book except for like the socks but like there's a hat pattern in there that i am dying to cast on there is a like a striped shirt pattern there's like a hood thing in there that i think is super cute and i would be able to go with um but so that is the Jensen cardigan finished all the knitting and just needs a good blocking very proud so let's get into the battles and what I am working on I'll start with the oldest first because the newest one we have to talk about a lot of things so boom so living in my stitching the high notes bag that says to bed or to sleep is an Outlander inspired project and an Outlander inspired bag. So I am knitting the Stripey Turtle Tank by Emily Curtis. I am so confident with that right now that I don't even know why I'm looking up because I'm so confident that that is who designed it. Because I, I know. Told you, Emily Curtis. Period. Stripey Turtle Tank. This is a black and white picture, but maybe you can see it. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. All right. So this is a paid-for fingering weight pattern that is usually called for one main color and like five or six minis. I am just doing two two colors with a um, two like four hundred four hundred yards of each guy um i'm distracted i'm not even gonna lie to you my mom fears that i have been scammed so we, she keeps going back and forth okay yeah we're gonna be outside and then it was a birthday there's a lot going on on this phone all right putting the phone back there so i this is where i was i haven't really gotten a lot done because i definitely focused my time on my husband's sweater and on my newest thing um so this is kind of my um on the go project or like a project that i can you know just sit if i'm talking to somebody or something like that so I love how the things are striping up. Some one time I did more stripes than was called for, so then I made up for that a couple of times. So I'm just kind of letting the stripes do their own thing. I'm not being too picky about what's going on. And um, yeah, I'm loving it. I don't want to measure it because I feel like I'm not even halfway to where I need to be. But look at that. It is so gorgeous. The yarn is beautiful. So the yarn is from Bumblebee Acres Farm. And the green colorway right here is called Fraser's Ridge. And my yarn cozies are Outlander and they're from Lila Styles. And all my stitch markers are Outlander themed from the Sexy Knitter. So that is Fraser's Ridge, and then this one, I am almost certain that that one, yes, I knew it. This color here 
is called Whiskey. So I really love this project. And when I pick it up and knit it, I always get like this surge of motivation of like, oh yeah, get it. And then you're going to, um, you're gonna at least get the body done and da 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 da. And I'll be like, girl, stop lying. You just really like working on it. And that's okay if you just like to work on it. Just don't lie to yourself thinking that you're gonna get it done. My brother got me this, um, my brother got me this little Tanjiro when he was in Florida. So I carry it in all my project bags and I put it in the one that I'm, you know, working on the most whenever I go places. So anything else? I'm making the third. No, not the third, the one, the fifth size, which is a 38 inch bust. Um, the pattern is said to have zero to two inches of negative ease. So I guess I did the 38 because negative ease would be like a 37, 36 inch bust. So I'm going to go with what Kira was thinking and we're just going to keep going. So. I'm going to move my progress keeper. My progress keeper is from Simply Serving. Also Outlander inspired. If you guys are watching the new season, is anyone else like just stressed out? I'm stressed out. That's the best, best way to describe my feelings. I'm stressed out. Um, but I do need to watch the newest episode and see how what's happening. But yeah, a little stressed out, but you know, Outlander just does that. It, they just stress you out, you know. But Moon My Progress Keeper, and that's where I am. I am knitting these on a US 3 or 3.5 millimeter needle. And of course, everything will be on the screen. Good job, editor. So, that is an older project. So here's what I am focused and have been focusing on and has given me a huge run for my money. So I applied for a test net. I hear you, I hear you, I know. You said you were done. You said you were done test netting. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah. I say stuff and then I do the opposite. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I got selected for the test net. This has been, respectfully, the most challenging thing I've ever done as far as test knitting. Um, I'm sure I can't give you a lot of what's going on in the pattern, um, but I can tell you that it is a measurement-based pattern. There are no numbers. You make the numbers off of what you are measured for and that scared the crap out of me I literally I've had the yarn for a while but I wanted to finish my husband's cardigan even after finishing my husband's cardigan I don't think I started my test net till about five days to a week later because I've been so scared of the process of this test net but I started it and I feel like I'm doing really really well so I'm very proud um, so the dress is called the Claudia dress and I'm going to put on the screen who it's by because I just know her Instagram handle is that yarn bitch. Um, but I want to make sure to put her like name up here. <laughs> um, so it is a sport weight, sport weight type pattern. Um, and I was a big girl and I, we did it, Joe. I swatched. I swatch so the smaller one so what was recommended in the pattern was a US 6 um, which is a four millimeter I'm guessing but I'm I feel so guessing. a four millimeter but I went down to a Five, US 5 which is a 3.75 millimeter 
because I like the fabric. So here's what the US 6 fabric made. So that's kind of what it looked like. And I guess I didn't really like the way the fabric looked in this one. So I swatched with the 3.75 and I just feel like it gave a little more maybe um, coverage. I don't know. I don't know if you can see through this. But I don't know. I just love the way the US 5 3.75 looked. It looked like it had a cleaner look to it. And it looked like I got more. So I think this is what I was supposed to get 22 stitches for 4 inches. I still didn't meet the gauge at this point. So yeah. But I feel like the gauge that I got is the gauge that like fits best for me. And then I also, I was watching the Grocery Girls and um, Tracy was saying that when she does swatches, she does these yarn overs to tell you what needle you used. So I did that too. Okay, I was like, what if it's not five? Um, so I did that too to make sure that I, you know, remembered which needle I used. And, um, yeah, it was such an interesting process. So, I did, in fact, cast on. Oh, let's talk about the yarn next. So, I bought the recommended yarn for the pattern. I think this is called Sandness Garn or Sandness Garn. Garn. Uh, it's their line type. It is 53% cotton. 33% viscose and 14% linen. So this is very new to me. I've never worked with viscose or linen before. I've done cotton and acrylic blends, but that's about all of my wheelhouse. So um, I think I can get through this. And then take a break. Um, so here is where I am. So I don't have a picture. Maybe the editor can try to get you a picture. Um, so basically it's a dress. And this is the cleavage part of said dress. And yeah, so this is how it's going. I finally got on with it and I think it's going extremely well. I really would love to try it on once I'm done. I think I'm at like the bust increases so I'd love to try it on once I'm done with that. But the construction is has been very very interesting. Um, my progress keepers are by Ooh Baby Bees and Kalisha of the Corky Monday Craft Cast. Uh, so I got my man Shaggy hanging out with me on both sides. So I love that. So let's choose a progress keeper as a family. Let's see. Well, I like to keep them thin. I'm probably going to use them. Uh, I think I'm going to put Velma on there. Put Velma on there. And I don't mind telling you guys my measurements. So I have a 36 inch bust. I think it was a 31 inch waist and 36 inches in the hips. So we'll see how this gets on. Because you know people do things like they want to make goals for the, the month. And I've already told myself that I'm in between, um, you know, getting back to working out and eating less processed things. But you never know. I really need to start with drinking more water. So once we get there, maybe. So that is this. That is the Claudia dress. Um, the color I chose, I don't know. I think the colors are just numbers. Um, 3011. So it's like a beige color. 
and the test knit is due on my husband's birthday the 28th of august but i need to have it done before that anyway because the day after my husband's birthday i'm going to see coco jones in concert she's coming to birmingham so i wanted this to be my dress that i go and see her in so i'm really excited now that i've gotten over the fears of like the measurements and like figuring all that stuff out i'm actually it's a really nice knit i'm really enjoying the process the yarn is growing on me so when i first got the yarn i was like oh my god this feels like hay and uh it was really weird so i think my kids would ethan I heard someone speak, but anyway, um, it felt like hay when it first came in, so I was like, girl, I don't know about this, honey, but now that I've been working with it, it's blooming a little bit better, and then even I blocked the swatches, so I got them wet and stuff, and it does feel like it got a little bit better after blocking, so I'm proud of that. So, and I have been, you know, rubbing it across my body and my face and making sure that, um, you know, I don't have any reactions or anything. And, um, it's been good. So, I'm actually extremely excited about this. So, I thought I should have some stitches. So, yeah, that's this. And it is living in my Naughty Knitting Sacks bag. And you can use the code SuperKnitter15 for 15% off. I use this one with tacos on it because in my mind, I feel like the outfit's going to be spicy. Muy caliente. Fuego. So, <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's going in the taco bag. And then inside the taco bag are little vaginas. Sorry if you have children. But I have a vagina. And I was like, yes, use it. Mm, so I've already used one so getting up to where did I so about to right here so halfway through the cleavage like right here I used one whole skein and this is all I had left from the first skein so we will see how many I need I had nine, ten, ten skeins. I had ten skeins and I used one skein to swatch. So, ten skeins. We'll pray we get it done with ten skeins. So, that is it. That is all that I am working on. Um, I don't have any kryptonite. My strategy today, or, you know, through the growing months, is that I'm going to get stress done. And I really want to finish that uh, tank top just because I feel like it'll be so cute and I hope that I can get it done either before the season ends or at least you know during the season I do work on it while I watch the show so I do try to keep true to the Outlander project while I watch Outlander but yeah that is it so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed what you saw please like comment subscribe and hit that post notification bell and it'll let you know whenever i post i hope you have the most amazing time living the craftiest life possible and i will see you in the next one bye <laughs>